Hello everyone and uh, welcome back. So in the uh, the second part of today's lesson, <clears throat> we are going to continue playing around with uh, Glitch, uh, except this time we're going to try to dive a little bit more into the actual um, bytes and see if uh, a if we could um, manipulate them uh, by uh, just accessing the bytes array directly. But then once we do, we uh, we can also read the bytes and then um, turn them into you know whatever we want. Uh, today's example, we're going to turn the bytes into a sequence of bits, or we're going to turn them into binary numbers, so strings of zeros and ones. And then we're going to create a visualization um, that's very much um, kind of a copy of <laughs> Ryoji Akeda's uh, test pattern uh, project, or at least inspired by okay? a much simpler version, but you know it's going to be aesthetically similar. So. Um, Let's start by uh, <clears throat> remixing the previous example we uh, developed. So I'm going to remix this one, and we're going to call that uh, bits. Okay. Yeah, bits. Uh, bits referring to zeros and ones. Okay. And uh, for this example, <clears throat> we're not going to use. Uh, so let me clean it up first. So we're going to get rid of a bunch of stuff here. Oops. Uh, the main reason I just remixed the original one is so I don't have to redo the HTML portion. So we are going to clean a bunch of um, clean a bunch of stuff here because we're basically writing a new example. <clears throat> Gonna get rid of everything, save for that, and uh, just keep our glitch object. Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to do, and let's just hit refresh. Okay. Blank screen, perfect. So the first thing I want to do is, uh, we don't need this anymore either, is uh, just to show you that we don't have to bring images into this library necessarily. Uh, we can bring any kind of file. So we are going to bring a, uh, a sound file. So I have this mp3 file that, um, can't even remember where I found it. I think I recorded it off of uh, some YouTube meme video, um, but it goes something like this. Side of your aircraft, you will notice flight 198 challenging us to a race. I've turned the fasten seatbelt sign back on because shit is about to get real. Okay, so a totally random little uh, sound sample here. I'm gonna up upload that to uh, <clears throat> to glitch, and uh, we're gonna define a file that we want to open. As a variable, and uh, we're going to open that file. Now we're not going to play it back here in the browser uh, today. Next in next week's lesson, we're going to talk about sonification, and we'll play some sounds. But today, um, we're not going to do that. However, we are going to load this file and then use it as a. We're going to do two things. One is going to we're going to manipulate the bytes a little bit and then save the output, so we'll be able to download it and listen to it through our uh, media player just to see what happened to our glitches. Uh, and then we're going to just use the file as a, the raw material for the zeros and ones sequence that we're going to visualize. And this could be literally any file. Uh, and different files will exhibit different patterns of ones and zeros and will have different uh, properties. So this is not an image. Uh, so we cannot load it using a load image. So we are going to use <clears throat> a function of the glitch class called load bytes. So we're going to use this one whenever we want to load more just files that are not images, right? Just uh, kind of any type of binary files or, you know, this, it could literally be any file. So here I have an MP3 file, but it could be anything. Uh, so this is the URL of my file I want to load. And kind of like with the load image function, we're going to define a callback, um, what to do when this uh, file is loaded. Now notice the callback doesn't have any parameters because we are calling this this is a function of the glitch object so the assumption here is that once those the bytes for this file are loaded they are going to go and live inside this uh, glitch variable so let's put a log here and we're going to sort of keep track of what happens using some logs and look at the console so let's write bytes loaded so we know this happened let's open the console and uh, let's navigate to our tab over here by selecting the one that matches the name of our program. There it is. <clears throat> and uh, let's hit refresh. Okay. By the way, I have to hit refresh and because I still have not rechecked a uh, refresh app on changes. So I have that box unchecked. If yours is checked, uh, 
changes happen automatically. So the bytes have been loaded. And if we take a look at glitch, right? So glitch now is our glitch object. Okay, and we can see it has a, <clears throat> if I hit enter, it has a bunch of stuff into it. Okay, so this is all of the variables that it has inside. Uh, it's in binary mode, whereas previously it would have been in image mode. And uh, it has this uh, thing called bytes, which is a uint8 array. Okay, so let's take a look at that. <clears throat> We are going to look at the bytes array. Okay, so this is a special kind of array uh, in JavaScript. It's a it represents so u int means unsigned integer. The eight is for eight bit, so zero to two fifty five, and then array. So it's an object that behaves like an array, but it's not exactly just like your generic array. It has a fixed size. That's the number of bytes that are in the file. Right, three hundred thousand. 325,380, that's the number of bytes inside this MP3. And um, it behaves a little bit different from an array. It doesn't have all the same functions. Uh, for example, you cannot uh, push things onto it, right? It doesn't have a push function, uh, but it has similar functions. You can access things like a uh, byte. Uh, so you cannot push variables onto it. Uh, you cannot add to it once it's, uh, it's a fixed size unlike our arrays we're used to, but otherwise it behaves like an array. Like you can access its values using an index. Uh, and it has a few functions of its own. Um, it has a function called copy within that's gonna be interesting for us uh, just to show that we can manipulate that array, update the bytes in glitch, and then save the transformed file. So copy within basically allows you to take chunks of data inside the array and then copy them somewhere else within that same array. So we're not gonna be changing the size um, we're going to just take a, a piece of the MP3 data. We're going to copy it somewhere else, overwrite some other data, and then uh, we're going to do that a bunch of times to introduce glitches in the sounds, okay? uh, just to show that we could do that. So after we've loaded the bytes here uh, in the callback function, so this is a good place to write this code because we know the bytes are ready to be used. They've been loaded. Um, let's write a little bit of code that's going to create some glitches into our... Uh, bytes array just for fun, okay? So we're gonna say, let's create a ver counter here, a for loop. Um, we're gonna introduce, uh, I don't know, 20 copies, okay? So we're gonna repeat this, whatever we do here, 20 times. Um, so first let's define a variable, let's call it copy size. Um, we're gonna take the floor of a random number uh, and that's going to be the number of bytes we want to copy. So I'm just gonna randomly here select um, 1000 to, between one and 6,000 bytes. Okay. I could exp experiment with this, pick different values. Uh, this means that the chunks that I decide to copy, they're not all gonna be the same size. Some of them might be really, really short for little glitches. Some of them might be a bit longer. Okay. So I don't actually know how long 6,000 bytes is gonna result in, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> so <clears throat> um, the other thing we're gonna create here is a variable to avoid us having to say glitch.bytes.length all the time. So this is the size of our bytes array. We're going to put into a variable called len just for uh, convenience. Okay. Um, so one thing we could do on, on this uh, bytes array is we can say copy within. Okay. And copy within takes three variables. Uh, first it takes, it's going to need the target. So I'm going to define these, but uh, in a second. So the target is going to be the index of the place where we want to copy something. Okay. And then it's going to have a um, a start and an end index, this is going to define the region we are interested in copying. Okay? So this is the insertion point, and then this is going to be the start index and the end index of a region we want to copy. So let's define these variables, and we're going to define them randomly. So I'm using floor here because I want these to be uh, integers. Right? I don't want decimal points here for my index values. So let's pick a number at random between um, the length of the array and uh, the length of <clears throat> the, let's see, uh, minus the copy size. Okay. All right. And in fact, uh, as our starting point here, we're also going to make sure we don't go all the way to zero, kind of like the way Glitch had the limit bytes. Okay, we're gonna, let's say we're not, we're gonna let, leave the first 10% alone. I don't know what the MP3 headers are like, so I'm just making it up. Um, then we're going to pick a start point. Uh, the start point, let's do the same thing. Okay, we're going to randomly 
pick a start point in the array. And then uh, the end point is going to be the start point plus the number of bytes we're copying. Okay, so the start plus the number of bytes we want to see, that's going to be our end point. And that's going to copy those bytes uh, within the array. <clears throat> okay, so let's hit refresh, make sure I didn't do any typos here. Okay, so no typos, so we're good. So now what we need is a way to save this file. So we're going to use uh, mouse pressed, or we could also use like key pressed. You know, instead of my press, mouse press, we could say if key equals S, this is maybe less prone to accidents. Uh, if we press the S key, it's a bit more intentional. Uh, we're going to do two things. Uh, first is we're going to say the glitch.save bytes. That's the one I was trying to use in the previous example. Uh, we're going to call this file test.mp3. And then we'll say glitch.update bytes. So whenever we've modified the bytes array, uh, we're going to tell Glitch that we made some changes so it knows to update its uh, its internal states and then it knows to save the most current version. So, so refresh. Now again, if I try this in here, it doesn't work. If I press S, it doesn't download anything. Something about the way the browser is set up with our sketch inside its own little iframe here. So the only way I can get these to work is to open into a new window and then hit S. So this is the MP3 we got back. Ladies and gentlemen, please your captain. Can you feel it to the right side of your aircraft? Get a flight one night. Challenge us to a race. And turn the buff and see the sign back. Shit, it's not real. It just sounds like a glitch piece of audio now. Um, we could increase the glitch factor if we wanted to a little bit. Um, let's say maybe I'll make these, these chunks longer. And then every time we copy something, <clears throat> maybe we are going to, uh, let's see. There's a chance we might break the file, but let's just, uh, let's try that. We're going to make a number of copies, successive copies to create kind of a glitching effect uh, between let's say one and four. Okay. And uh, we're going to repeat. Uh, I is already taken, so I'm going to use J. Create a for loop here. We're going to repeat this copy thing, except each time the target, we're going to increase by number of copies, uh, no, by J times the uh, copy size. Okay. Let's see what that does. I'm going to go back here, hit refresh, save it. So now it's copying some chunks, but then it's it's repeating them up to four times uh, whenever it's copying. So uh, it's also overriding some of the old um, pieces of the the audio, but uh, so it's really mangling the sound quite a bit. But anyways, <clears throat> I don't want to dwell on this too much. Uh, but this is just to show you that we can load binary files. Uh, so not just images, any kind of files. And then once we do, we have this bytes array that we can access, that we can mess with. Um, we could do copy within. Uh, you could even, uh, you know, you could figure out ways that you could extend this byte array. For example, instead of overriding sections of the bytes, um, you could create copies that would grow the file size so that it would just create repeats without erasing anything. Um, that's beyond what I want to go into for this example, but um, this could be possible essentially by creating a, a, separate, a separate normal array on the side, copying all the bytes into it, expanding it as you're copying sections, and then converting that back into a uint8 array to put into this glitch.bytes um, for the library to work. But anyways, that's a, a sidetrack. So the point is we can load binary files and we have access to this glitch.bytes array. <clears throat> so from there, um, what could be fun to play with is in addition to being able to, you know, it's, it's all fun to just mangle files and kind of create these glitches. Uh, we could also just look at kind of the rawest, most lowest form of data we have in, um, in our computer, which is the bit, right? Every one of those bytes is a, is a sequence of eight zeros and ones, eight bits, right? Where zero is eight zeros and 255 is eight ones, and all the numbers in between are a binary number. 
<clears throat> so it would be cool if we could take a binary, uh, a, uh, not a binary, uh, a bit, a byte, to like any of those those number, convert it into its binary representation, right? and then build a long sequence of one and zeros that we can then interpret visually inside our sketch. So that's what we're going to do for the rest of this uh, lesson. So the first job that we have here is we're going to take our bytes array, and we're going to do that uh, after our glitching. So glitch things up a bit for fun. Okay, and then we're going to generate binary data from the bytes array. So let's put a log here. Let's say generating binary data. <clears throat> okay. So glitch.bytes, right, contains um, bytes, right? So a byte is eight bits. And what we want to end up is we want to expand this to have the zero and one sequence represented by this byte. So we're going to create an array of our own, and we're going to call it binary for just binary numbers. And um, the way that we can do this in JavaScript to go from a byte to a binary number is, uh, is pretty straightforward. I'm going to demonstrate to you in the console here. So let's say I have a number, let's call it n. Okay, I'm going to say, um, okay, why not? So n is equal to 134. So this, is a this could be the value of a byte because it's between 0 and 255. I could convert this number to any string representations uh, where I get to decide what is the base um, the, the base for the conversion. So base 10, right, is decimal, 134. Base 16, we saw is hexadecimal. So this one doesn't have, have any letters in it, but uh, it's that 134 is 86 in hexadecimal. And in base 2, this is binary. Okay. So now we can go from a number any number, we can get its binary representation. And by the way, it doesn't have to be just a byte. It could be any number. We could turn it into its binary representation. So <clears throat> this gives me a string that contains a sequence of zeros and ones. So that's pretty neat. Now the challenge is, let's say n is equal to a smaller number, let's say 3. Okay, And I do the same thing. It's only going to return um, 1 and 1. Okay. What I want to capture here is instead of one and one, I would like this to be zero, 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 one, one. Okay. So this is the full byte. It has eight bits in it. Um, the first six bits are set to zero, and then the last two are set to one. This is the number three in binary. And the reason these zeros are important is because we're going to turn that into a sequence of zeros and ones. So if we lose the zeros here, we're going to kind of mess up our pattern in some way, and we're going to lose some information. What I want to get it to is the sequence of zeros and ones that are actually stored inside each one of these bytes. So we're going to need a method to be able to add some zeros to this string um, to make sure it has eight, um, eight, eight values, right? Always eight digits, no matter what the number was. <clears throat> so the way we can do this is we're going to say n.toString so convert the number to a string in base two. And then we're going to use a function called pad start. So we're going to pad the start of the string until it has a maximum length of eight. And we're going to pad it with the digit zero. So this is going to be kind of our um, series of functions that are going to take a number as the input. And they're going to convert it into the proper um, binary representation always eight digits long, regardless of uh, what two string returns to us. <clears throat> so let's start with, um, let's write a for loop that's going to go through all of the bytes that we have in our bytes array. So that's easy. We're going to say glitch dot bytes dot length i plus plus. Okay. So that's going to iterate through all 300 thousand and so on change bits that we have. So let's grab our byte here, our individual byte, just so things are very clear. We're going to say, let's grab byte, aha. Uh -huh. And um, then we're going to convert that to a binary string. Okay. Let's call it bin because uh, we've already created the variable binary up here. I don't want to repeat, repeat myself. So we saw that we can do this. Uh, we're going to say byte dot to string to pad start up to eight digits. And we're going to pad with the zeros in the front. So that's going to give me a string that's going to have eight characters in it. And uh, 
it's going to represent the binary value of every byte in my file. So now what we can do is we're going to iterate over this uh, string. I'm going to say for every digit that we have, or let's call it bit, for every bit of bin. <clears throat> this is the shortcut syntax, excuse me, for uh, iterating over an, an, an array without using a counter. Okay, so you can, uh, strings are, we can iterate over strings in JavaScript. Uh, let me show you that actually in the console. So for example, if I write for bit of bin and go console.log bit, you'll see that it's, uh, well, it's got six zeros and two ones. Okay? So a string can be iterated over just like an array. When you iterate over a string, you iterate over the individual characters of that string. So now that we've done this, um, I can say binary.push. So binary is my array that's empty. I'm going to push individual bits onto the end of the array. So that by the time we're done with this for loop, we're going to have um, an array called binary. And that contains the binary representation in a sequence of all the bytes contained in the file. Okay. Let's say total bits, we're going to add, uh, we're going to print the length of binary just to see that it did something. Uh, I obviously don't want to print the array because it's going to be huge. Uh, let's see, what's my mistake here? I have an extra curly bracket. You got to be careful when, uh, when you use loops uh, with single lines, right? It's easy to have an extra curly bracket in there. Okay, so now you see we have a lot more bits than what we started with. And in fact, if I go in the console like this and I don't, uh, it won't print out the whole thing. The console is smart enough to stop here. Uh, you can see that's now the content of my binary array, right? So now it's filled with ones and zeros, and these are the binary representation of the bytes that we had inside our data file. So now what we could do with this, um, and this is what uh, Ryoji Akeda does in a lot of his works, is uh, is look at this information sequence and then turn it into some kind of visuals. Like we could literally play through this like we would play through a movie or a narrative. Um, <clears throat> we could say if we wanted to draw, let's say like, let's draw the first bit of the sequence here. Uh, let's create some visuals that are inspired by um, test pattern right, one of his most uh, famous works. Uh, so let's say we're going to divide the screen here, and whenever there's a one in the file, we're going to draw a white rectangle, and whenever there's a zero, we're going to draw a black rectangle. So uh, let's turn off the stroke, so that doesn't affect our drawing. And uh, let's define a variable, and we call it w. That's going to be the width of one, one bit, okay, so 10 pixels wide, <clears throat> which means uh, if we have 10 pixel wide bits, uh, the number of bits we're going to have to draw is going to be width divided by W, number of rectangles. So let's write a for loop. That's going to go count for as many rectangles as we want to draw, right? And then we will ask the question, take a look inside this binary array, right? And if the value is uh, zero, we're going to set a black fill. Uh, else, because it can only be zero or one, we're going to set a white fill. And then we're going to draw some rectangles. Now we need some X coordinate for these rectangles. We cannot use our counter directly. We are going to map it. We're going to map the counter, which goes from zero to N. We're going to map it to a value between zero and width. And then we're going to draw a box at X zero. That box will be 10 pixels wide. Right, so W, and it's going to fill the window vertically, height. Let's hit refresh. Okay, we don't need this console anymore. So this pattern here, well, actually, I should have left the console open. That's okay. So this pattern here is the first, uh, however many values we have. That depends on the width of my space here. Um, this is the first. Uh, binary values in the array represented as black or white boxes. Okay. 
So what we could do is if uh, we wanted to make this a little bit more interesting, we could animate this, right? We can say, let's pretend this is a movie. We're going to increase the starting index of this uh, over time so that we're constantly just moving through the array to create this uh, animation. Now, this is going to move quite quickly. Uh, so just a word of warning, if you're sensitive to flashes, um, this is not the video you want to watch. You may want to stop watching at this point or skip ahead. Um, it's going to get pretty intense. <clears throat> so what we need is we need a way to kind of move forward in the file. So all that means is uh, we're going to add a, a constant offset here to our index. So let's call that binary index. Okay. So this is just going to be a number that we can increase over time so that when we check the colors, um, like over time, we can animate a binary index by increasing it. Okay. So how much do we want to add to it? Well, let's add the width of one of our uh, bits. Okay. Plus equal W. So this number is going to grow over time. And if it, for whatever reason, uh, just to be on the safe side here, if this is ever greater than uh, binary dot length, if we run out of values, we're going to go back to the beginning. Okay, but this probably will take a while because there's like 2 million and change. All right. Cool. So now what we're doing is we're scanning through the file. And now obviously we're in a bit of the file where there was tons of zeros, but now we got more regular zero and one patterns. Um, this is going to shift eventually to some <clears throat> other patterns, right? So we're reading through the, the bits, ones and zeros values of our binary file, and we're just getting an animation out of it. It's a simple idea, but really effective. We're like, we've kind of zoomed in into the very uh, micro level at this point, at least as micro as we can get on the computer, uh, looking at the zeros and ones, and we're kind of flying over the file here. And uh, this is what we see. <clears throat> so just to make it a little bit more fun here, uh, because test patterns got these two sort of uh, sets of sequences moving side by side, um, I could create another file if I wanted to, if I had more time. You know, I could I could juxtapose two files to see just create two different sequences of numbers uh, flying around here. Um, we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to cheat a little bit, and we are going to simply draw the same sequence, but in reverse on the bottom half of the screen. Okay. Or here's what I mean by that. Um, we're going to just draw rectangles that are half the height. Okay. So this is our top sequence now. And uh, instead of going from left to right, we're going to draw the same sequence in a given frame, but from right to left. And uh, this is a very easy trick we can do to do this uh, using map. We're going to map i, which goes from 0 to n, uh, for a second x value for our bottom row. We're going to, instead of mapping it to a number between 0 and width, we're just going to flip that. We're going to map from a number between width and 0. Okay, Reverse the order for the bottom row. And then we're going to draw a box again, except that x2 <clears throat> and using W for the width. And uh, this is going to be at height over 2 because we want that box to start in the middle. And it's going to have half the height as its height. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. So this is just to create a little bit more interest. Uh, now we have the, the two sequences. In fact, it is the same sequence, right? We're just creating a, a bit of a mirror effect. But uh, it looks kind of cool. And if we make it full screen, we'll get the, the full effect of, um, there we go. <clears throat> so like I said, um, some rather fast moving images, uh, but there's lots of really interesting things you could do with this idea. Uh, I mean, you can draw inspiration from uh, Ikeda himself, look at some of his other work, now that you have access to the bits of a file, right? How could you interpret this sequence of zeros and ones, right? And what kind of patterns could you create, right? We could choose to draw out the entire file as an image, right? We could fill out individual pixels, see, kind of create a big, big picture of that sound file over time, see what it looked like. Uh, so many things we could do. So for your code exercise this week, um, just try to have fun with this idea of the glitch or the error. 
um, and just th try to think about the data, you know, forget about the, what it means, uh, just really think of it as a raw sequence of numbers. And then uh, using the glitch library, uh, you can bring those sequences in and then turn them into whatever to see what happens. So either um, embrace the glitch aspect, right? Create, try to bring in some files and see if you can create some happy accidents through glitching, or uh, like we did in this lesson, um, you know, just look at the look at the the sequences of numbers inside the bytes array, and then create your own just your own ver visual rendition of that sequence. Uh, this one is obviously. I wouldn't even call it inspired at this point. It's pretty much a, a ripoff um, uh, of the of test pattern, but so many other um, ways that we could interpret that zero and one uh, sequence of numbers. So hopefully you have fun with this week's exercise and I will uh, see you next week.